Alright, hello YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how you can um, apply like a, a realism texture to your models in DayZ. So I'm going to use this famous from Snafu Mods, or Snafu Guns, sorry. I'm going to just do the, the body and the rail in this example. So I'm going to get the original textures and put them on this model. So I'm going to apply our base material on this one. I'm going to call this one body. And then on the rails as well, I'm going to apply material and call this one uh, rail. Just so I've got oh, so I've got two materials in the list and I don't get confused with which one's which. So I'm going to start with the body. I'm going to extend colors on this uh, node. I've already got the, the pictures from the, the mod that here. So I'm going to get the famous color image and drag that into this, connect to the color. And yeah, it's all lined up correctly. So I'm going to do the rest with the, the no HQ. I'm going to drag this one in. And I've got to change this from the color space from sRGB to non-color for the no HQ and the SMBI. And we're going to extend this uh, normal and bump, connect the no HQ to the no HQ part and turn the mix up. So it gives it the, the detail and the, the texture and stuff like that of the original model. And it's still too shiny, so we need the SMDI for that. I'm going to minimize these two, just so that it's a bit tidier here, because the SMDI is sort of going in the middle of them both. I'm going to minimize that, extend the surface and shiny, and we need the SMDI input for that. So I'm going to drag that in, put it here, color space to non-color, that to the SMDI. So there's the body part. We're going to do the same for the rail now. So the color this one Go into the color minimize surface and shine we'll do the SMDI next uh, non-color SMDI minimize and then the no HQ so non-color no HQ no HQ mix there you go. so we've got the free we've got the gun how it looks in game inside the blender so we're gonna add a texture just to the main gun for now and we're gonna um keep all the detail about like all the scratches and these little faded parts it's going, basically going to be this but with like a faded realism pattern on there so it looks like it's actually realistic not super colorful and bright and in your face so we're gonna go to this website here it's called freepick.com what i've done in the, in the search bar is I'll search for large seamless pattern so these images will like be able to tile next to each other and wrap around each other and they're like without any weird seams, hence the name seamless. So I'm just gonna find a random picture. Do you know what? It's it's not even gonna go anywhere, so I'm just gonna click this one. This one's fine. So I can't get this one because it's a premium image. So if I go back, you can see they're like a little crown on them, that means a premium. And this one hasn't got a crown on it, so I'll use this one. I'm gonna click download. This attribution is required. I don't know what that means. That means tell them where I got it from. Attribution, how, when, and where. So I got it from freepick.com today. And how I got it is I click this button here. I downloaded. There we go. I've done my attribution. You can't sue me. So it comes with a bunch of images. I just want the JPEG image from there, though. So I get a JPEG, drag it, Alt Tab, drag it through Blender, and let go. So this is the image. I'm going to connect this to the. Oh wait, first of all, you need to get this because it's going to help for good preferences and your edit. So, sorry, that's too quick. Edit preferences. Go to add-ons and search for Wrangler, W-R-A-N. Search for RAN and enable node Wrangler. And now when I click on this image, if I hold control shift and then click it, it'll automatically apply it to the part. Oh, I've done it on the wrong part. I meant to do it on this part, but it's okay. But it'll just show you on the model exactly what that image there does look like. So I'm going to... Put that back on there. I'm going to do it on this one, on the base one. I'm going to keep the rails as they are. Might add a bit of color later. But um, yeah, make sure you click on the correct model when you do it. Drag the JPEG in. Control Shift click. See that? That looks a bit all over the place. It didn't look how good as I thought it was going to look. So, first thing I'm going to do, con uh, Control T with the image select this one. It's got that white box around it. Press Control T and this will pop up. I'm going to get this generated one, connect it to locate the vector there. So from generated to vector. And where it says flat, I'm going to change that to box. So it already looks a little bit better. I'm just going to mess with the scale on this. So I'm just going to go with that. And the thickness is a Y scale. Yeah, so I'm just going to mess with that until that looks a bit better as well. Not going to be perfect, this is just a quick tutorial, but 
say you want that pattern on your gun, but that there on its own just does not look like it's meant to be on the gun. It looks forced. So we're going to manipulate this color image here. So if I preview this, it's just the the color image that came with the gun. And as you can see, it's got like, luckily this image actually, so it's a good image, it's all black and white, so it's very easy to use. But we're going to add a ramp, a color ramp in here now. So as you can see, we're currently previewing it to this surface, just straight image to it. So I'm going to shift A on that line and search for a ramp. And when you drop the ramp, make sure this line that's connected to the surface is highlighted like this. And then you want to manipulate this so they're close together like this. And basically all the black parts are going to be where the texture is. And all the white parts are going to be the original texture of the model. So I'm going to start with like that as a little baseline for now. No, not, not drum and bass or anything like that, just the base texture I meant to say. And then on this part, we're going to add a mixed color node. So search for a mixed color. Again, when that line's highlighted, you can drop it like this. We're going to connect this to the factor. And then I'm going to change something like this, that red. Yeah, so the red one is the original gun color. So from this image straight to the red bit. And then this one here, the A, is from the this pattern image here. So we're going to connect that to A. And you control shift click on there to preview it. And you can manipulate this a bit more to get kind of a better texture. It's the wrong way around, I believe. I'm going to zoom in so I can see a little bit better. So put that over there. Drag this down a bit more. No, it's definitely the other way around. So obviously, the more black it is, the more the new pattern is, the more gray it is. So that there looks like it's like a worn version of it. Turn it up a bit more. It looks like it's slowly getting worn down. So like you just manipulate it until you get that worn effect on there. So then this is now the new color image. So I'm going to drag these over this way and connect this into the main color of the node. We preview that. As you can see, it looks like it's part of the model now. And if you really want to um, make this bump and stuff like that, you can do. It's just, it's not always going to be perfect, but I'll show you how you can do that. So we're going to get another, let me move these two down out of the way a second. Actually, no, move that one back up because we need to extend this normal and bump. So we're going to create a new ramp node in Nexus height map. Shift A, search for ramp. Put that there. And from the pattern image, I want to, in fact, no, from this image, I want to connect that down into the color ramp. I'm going to control shift click on there to see what this looks like. So all the white parts are the bits that are going to bump out. So I want to drag that down like this. So only the, the eyes, I'm going to say the eyes, that's what they look like to me, are the white parts. So I'm going to drag this now into the height map. Preview this by control shift clicking it again. And there's no change at the moment. But if you turn this height map up now, you can see it adds like a, kind of like a little bump to it. You can change this down if you want to make it more like this. So it kind of looks like it's been painted on with some like, like some hard paint. And if it looks pixelated, like it see us like Minecraft steppy blocks, you change this linear on the, the pattern image to cubic. And it should make it look a lot smoother, not cubic, sorry. So smart on this one. Okay, not on this image, this one doesn't work. But if it does look bumpy, that, oh wait, hang on a second. It's from this image, I believe. Smart. Yeah, so it gives it, it's not really done on this image. That's a bad example. But if your image looks very, very blocky and pixelated, changing your pattern image to um, smart or cubic should smooth it out. Let me try and get a close up and see if I can ex show you a bit more better. So linear, see this like blocky edges around here. But that's normally quite like predominant on this stuff. But if you change it to cubic, it smooths it out, just see. But obviously, this was just a bad example of an image. But that's how you can add the, the texture. Obviously, the bump doesn't look very realism. But that's how you can do it. You could also connect that into like the roughness, see what that does. I won't do anything, actually, because the SMDI is connected. Ignore me. So there's how you can do that. This, uh, this looks stupid. I got, I'm not going to do that. But it looks pretty cool. Let me try... Um, just the pattern on there and see what that does. So pattern into the factor, connect that up. 
Uh, yeah, I can bring that down actually, so it's just straight up. Like so. Connect that to the height map. This is just me freestyling at the minute. I'm just trying to see what I can do with it. So you can see it gives it like a little bit of a sticky, sticker vibe now. So bring that down. Just bring this closer. So that gives it more of that. It's not very defined. And for some reason it's not shown on these bits because of the ramp that I put on there earlier. So this is just a bad example. But that's how you can use your image to create a bump map anyway. So I think that looks fairly realistic. But like I said, you can tweak this to get it where you like it. So you can... So if you have like damage systems and stuff like that, you can have it so it's like really damaged and worn down like this. I did that and made the pattern a bit bigger. Maybe this will look really cool. No, not really. But that's how you can do it anyway, guys. With the with a color ramp and a mixed color node. I'm gonna bring that back to back here. I'm gonna try and invert this. So that does. It definitely looks better the other way, doesn't it? But you can do a lot with color ramps, guys, just so you know, you can use them as masks, as I've done with this, and it's brought out a pretty, pretty detailed look. And if you didn't even want a pattern, you could disconnect the pattern from here. Oh, the Raj disconnected the wrong one, Control-Z. Disconnect the pattern and just pick a base color for your gun. Which works as well, it makes it look more realistic and again adjust this to, to your liking to where you want it to look realistic and such. So just with this ramp from the original color into a, a, the factor of the mix node. So how the factor works as well, let me just explain this the best I can how I do it. I connect the factor to the factor and then I connect the color to the the, the original color that I'm using to the B. So factor and B. So if I put that there, no, that didn't work. So <laughs> I didn't explain anything. But A is the A is the color that you pick to put over the top of your gun. So you can have like a white famous. It's much simpler way to skin your gun and make it not look too crazy in game. And that was a long 12 minutes. I hope I hope that helped you guys. <laughs> but I'm gonna cut that back up. The weird eyeball one. I'm gonna go with the eyeballs. There you go guys, a nice realistic approach to reskinning your models. I hope that like I hope you liked it. Sorry this video is a bit all over the place. I I do admit I'm a bit poorly. But I thought I'd make this video for you guys because it's something I like to do, and I don't I haven't really shared this before. And I'd love to see more guns like this, show the realism look in Daisy. So if you like this video, please leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, because every time I get a stupid idea, I want to share it. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it straight on YouTube for you guys so you can learn as I learn.